All right, so the next thing I picked up from my wood kiln is this combination uh, humidity and temperature um, probe uh, that I got off of the Jungle website. Uh, it's got a really long uh, cable on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this right above here so it's facing me and then just run the cable down and then uh, well, back down over there and back through the hole where I have for my temperature controller. But this will give me the ability to monitor the actual humidity down there plus temperature uh, pretty easily from right here. All right, so for temperature control of my kiln, I found this uh, Pony, I guess that's how I pronounce it, um, temperature control power strip uh, on a, um, let's see, it's a website that's close to the jungle. Yeah, the jungle website, yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, pretty neat little unit. It's got um, three plugs in it, it's got cooling and then two heating units, I guess for uh, primary and secondary heating. Uh, I may use these for like primary heating. I'm gonna use a oil-filled radiator heater. Uh, if needed, and then if I uh, when they're doing the sterilization, I need to get up to about 140, 150 degrees. I may put in some heat lamps for secondary heating just to make sure I can get that temperature up. Uh, what's cool about this unit here is you can, if you're uh, inclined to have your wood rest overnight or something like that, you can set this to run uh, during the day from certain times during the day and have a different set point at night. Uh, so you can set up a uh, Daytime set point, nighttime set point, whatever you want uh, for your temperature uh, on here. Um, it's a pretty self-contained unit. The only thing is I built the kiln before I installed this thing, so these plugs don't come off. So what I'm going to end up having to do is kind of to cut a little hole in my thing, slide this through, and then pull them up. Good thing is uh, these cables are pretty dang long. I can't remember how long they were. I think five or six feet. Um, yeah, probably about five feet or so on there. So that's more than enough to run uh, all of this. So, uh, this unit is going to be mounted up on my workbench out here, uh, up on the wall and everything else will be down inside the kiln itself. So we're going to go ahead and install that and uh, keep working. All right. So for my cooling for fans, uh, I have these electronic cabinet um, fans. Uh, these are designed for continuous duty. Uh, a company I used to work for years and years ago uh, had a whole lot of electronic cabinets and we had to change these things out every year and had to throw them out if they were good or not. So I had a whole stack of these things. Uh, as you can see, all I do is kind of just zip tie them together and then uh, solder wires across. Uh, I also put on a uh, selector switch for speed control. Not that I'm going to need it for this application, but uh, it's there if I need it. So uh, what I'm probably going to do is wrap this thing up, make sure all this is protected, and then um, I'm probably just going to set it on top of the wood, uh, blown across. That way I, I don't have it in one central place. I can put it wherever I think I need it, try different spots before I kind of finalize that. All right, so uh, I've got all the wood uh, cut and stacked in here. Um, I've got the little fans I showed you a while ago in here, uh, wired into my temperature controller, uh, which is pretty much going to run all the time to be honest, but at least I have some kind of control in there. Uh, and then I've got my little uh, dehumidifier sitting over here. Uh, I'll show you in a minute where I pop the hole out the side and I'm gonna run it into a bucket. That way I can keep track of how much moisture I'm taking out uh, each day so I can track uh, how much uh, I'm getting out of the wood. Um, <clears throat> pretty happy with uh, the way everything's gone together. Um, anxious to get this going and see how well it's gonna work. So here is the kiln, completely full as you can see, it's as much as I can put in there. Uh, that is uh, most of that uh, 33 inch elm. I've got them cut down to about uh, 19 to 22 inches depending on, because one side's a live edge, uh, depending on the, the width. And then uh, also here you'll see this is a, uh, a mantle that I made for my brother and it is a piece of oak. <laughs> Uh, it is six inches across and uh, eight inches. So yeah, six by six by eight inches, and it is seven foot long. It weighs probably 300 pounds. Uh, I told him he's going to have to have some serious bracing to hold that on his wall above his fireplace. But anyway, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get this thing closed up and get everything turned on and see how it works. <laughs> Thank you. 
welcome back to Cave In Builds. Uh, here's an update on my wood kiln. Um, I've had this thing running for almost three weeks. Um, been learning a few things early on, and um, it's it's worked pretty well. So a couple of changes from the video before. Uh, I still have the dehumidifier hooked over here on the end, uh, but what I ended up doing was I ended up moving the heater back behind over here toward the middle, and then um, I. I initially had one of those fans, the little, uh, my little uh, cabinet fans mounted at the end there. And what I found was I wasn't getting a, a decent, uh, I wasn't getting a decent uh, circulation because I have a temperature probe in the center here and I have another one that's on the end here so that I can see what the temperature and humidity is uh, in different parts of the kiln. And I wasn't getting consistent readings between the two. So I went ahead and added this tower fan you see here to kind of give you some circulation across uh, up underneath and through the wood. And then this one blows the heat and everything around to try to help circulate it. Uh, once I did that, I got to where uh, the two readings were pretty close within a degree of each other, uh, a degree or two. And so that was pretty good. Um, I think I will probably move forward. I have another set of those uh, little fans. I will probably end up putting another set down on the floor um, kind of in the back there so I can get better circulation because what I've noticed is, and I'm going to show you here this in a bit, um, obviously the wood on the top is much drier than the ones on the bottom, meaning I'm probably not getting as good a circulation as I probably need. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of just basic readings off of what I have um, on each one and then uh, we're going to probably pull off a couple of ones off the top because I think they're done and we're gonna kind of reallocate uh, some of our uh, airflow fans and see if we can kind of finish this off. All right, so this is a simple little uh, pin type gauge I've got. So a 9.7 there. This is the second piece down, right about 10, 12, 12, 12, and 9. Interesting. There it goes. Yeah, we'll mark 12. Now, I do, I do know, realize that <clears throat> I need to actually make a cut and kind of measure to the center. I'm actually just measuring the outside, but I wanted to see kind of what the outside was telling me. Yeah, that's very interesting. So, it's very apparent that this end over here, closest to the dehumidifier, obviously, has gotten much drier, which means I'm probably not moving enough air right there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my other set of these fans I have, and I'm going to put it in down here somewhere so that it blows air up underneath there because um, <clears throat> or across it somehow. I'm going to have to work on this. But I'm definitely not getting enough airflow because this thing, this end over here is about just under 10 across the board. And I've got 12 down there. So I'll need to work on that. Um, this is Elm. And it is <laughs> very thirsty to say the least. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this down to 8%. Um, 9, 10% is probably about as good as I'm going to get down here in South Texas here in the springtime. So I'm going to go ahead and work on pulling the top few off and then uh, move my fans around and try to get this thing going again for a little while while I'm working on those top ones. All right, so here's the changes I made. Uh, probably going to be a little challenging for you to see. but So I've got one of my uh, cabinet fan setups over here, blowing air across the top. I moved the, sorry about the noise, but I moved the tower fan there and it's blowing air kind of around this way, okay? And then I move the initial fan over here, hoping to be able to blow air across. So I'm trying to create a circulation that kind of goes around this way and then some around here as well, trying to get this leveled out. Because uh, like I said, I'm under 10% down here on almost all of these, and I'm right around 13 on these down here. So I've got to level this out before I pull these out. So got everything turned back on. I'm going to close it up and put it on for a few more days. <laughs> 